Hey guys, what's up? My name is Rizia Adam and I'm coming with you today with the latest news in celebrity news, fashion, sports, film, television, all around the world. Let's begin our show. So 2020 has been such a long year for all of us and I know that we're all super glad that it's gonna end, but we're all trying to get into the holiday spirit. So just like any other city in the entire world, Washington DC is doing the same as COVID cases are exploding across the entire country. It's unclear how long the pandemic will last, but the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts is one of the arts groups that's cautiously working on a comeback. So let's see what they're going to cook up for the holiday season. Two of the three main stages at the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts remain closed. But Washington, D.C.'s premier art center is cautiously reopened its opera house. Live performances resumed in October, but the experience is different. To prevent the spread of the virus, only 50 people are allowed in the audience, and they are seated on the stage. So the idea was to put everybody here on stage, put the audience on stage, reverse the relationship between the artist and the audience, so the artist is playing onto the stage. Temperature checks are mandated, seats are well over six feet apart, and artists must pass a COVID test before the performance. The mood has been wonderful, and that's part of the experience of being on stage here at the Opera House. Because as you walk through backstage and you see the memorabilia from past performances, this is a new experience for the audience. They're having a chance to be on stage, which is not, so, not something they normally get a chance to do. It feels wonderful. It feels wonderful to make music in a larger space. I have a very nice studio, but it's, you know, it's confined. The Centre recently renovated the Opera House's ventilation system and offers one performance a week. Tickets for the performances are selling out in minutes. Everyone here says no recorded performance can compare to being on stage and seeing the eyes of people in the audience. It's just energy that goes back and forth. You can, you can feel it if the audience is really silent, even the applause at the end. The Kennedy Center has scheduled only two live performances for December. Officials hope to carefully open up even more as conditions improve in 2021. Karina Befredjan for VOA News, Washington. Now let's head on over to Senegal, where unfortunately women's rights activists in the country say gender-based violence has increased during the pandemic. Senegalese artist Dayart exhibits her own experience. Estelle Danjado has more from Dakar. 47 years old Senegalese painter Dayart, who only wishes to be identified by her artist's name, is a survivor of gender-based violence. The mother of two was born with a disability that made it hard for her to protect herself from her violent husband. Dyart divorced and uses her paintings to show the attacks and social stigma against abused women. I identify with these paintings. I don't take the suffering of another, but I take my own suffering. I'm trying to represent on a canvas. So, through my brushes, my painting, as a committed artist, it is my duty to raise awareness through my paintings. But it is also my duty to denounce. Activists say gender-based violence has increased globally during COVID-19 restrictions, and Senegal is no exception. Activist DDDD created violence against women in Senegal after a close friend was killed by her husband. During the COVID-19 lockdown, Didi's website has been flooded with messages from women in need. All of the cases I have received are where women are being kicked out of their homes by their husbands just to make life hard for them just before curfew. To raise awareness of the abuse of this year's International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women on November 25, Dayart is showing her work at Dakar's House of Urban Culture. Dayart's painting will be on display throughout the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, an annual international campaign from November 25 until December 10, Human Rights Day. Estelle Jonju for VOA News, Dakar. 
Now, as we stick with the same topic about sexual assault, especially during this pandemic, let's continue with how art therapy can be part of work through past trauma. Maxim Moskalov tells a story of sexual assault survivors who've turned therapy into a thriving business where women can also help other women survivors. Cousins Ellie Klogerty and Kristen Malinowski grew up in Northern Virginia and both headed to Virginia Tech to get a degree in neurobiology. The young women had a lot in common. One of the big things, both say they are survivors of campus sexual assault. As part of their recovery, the two launched a jewelry line called Camaria. When I started designing jewelry, I went from an idea of something that wasn't in existence yet, and you could just find a way to bring it to life. The young women started studying jewelry making in New York and traveled the world to learn different jewelry styles. A year after Camaria was launched, Klogerty and Malinowski started a non-profit called Restore Dignity that offers financial help to the victims of campus sexual assault. 10% of Camaria's proceeds go to the Restore Dignity. You would be surprised to know that we have had applications from students who are having their diplomas held until they pay their uh, student health care costs, and those student health care costs were directly retributed to sexual assault. Many jewelry pieces that Klogerty and Malinowski make are asymmetrical. The cousins say they are meant to show beauty in imperfection. It's so meaningful and it's easy to attach symbology to something so small. One of our signature pieces is the butterfly necklace, and the butterfly represents hope and transformation, which is a good reminder for survivors. The young women believe the COVID pandemic has taught people to be more empathetic towards each other. They say these times are forcing many people to lead very isolated lives, like the ones sexual assault victims often lead. Camaria means moonlight in Swahili, so the idea is like the moon, even when you're surrounded by darkness, um, you reflect light just because you exist. We're gonna support Maxim Moskalko for VOA News, Washington. As most of us know, the Black Lives Matter movement has been around for a long while. But during the pandemic, it gained a lot of momentum, and especially to the African diaspora all around the world. Driving While Black is a film about race, space, and mobility in America. It's a new documentary by filmmaker Rick Burns and historian Gretchen Sorin that traces the racial profiling in African Americans, the ones that they've encountered on the road since slavery. VOA's Penelope Palou spoke with the film creators. Driving While Black, a documentary by Rick Burns, chronicles the discrimination and violence African Americans have often encountered while driving. In order to understand what's happening today, I felt strongly, we felt strongly, that you had to go all the way back to slavery because that's the point where freedom is denied and mobility is denied. The film documents how during the U.S. antebellum era, plantation owners employed slave patrols to monitor and punish slaves who tried to escape. It portrays the slave catchers as a precursor to white supremacists and some local sheriffs of the post-slavery Jim Crow era who targeted African-American motorists from the 1920s to the 1960s. Liberty is locomotion. It was a, a form of self-empowerment. You drive, automobile. You get to go where you want, when you want, not sit in the back of the bus, but also an opening to a whole world of challenge um, as you now must navigate this spaces where African mobility is seen as worrisome and unpleasant and to be stopped by a, a large cohort of white Americans. Perils grew for black motorists at night. So one of the hazards of driving was encountering people who were less interested and you being in that particular neck of the woods. And I say neck of the woods, a neck in the woods, you know, watch out for you know, being lynched or being uh, harassed or terrified. How do you navigate the segregated highways of America if you're an African American, where if your daughter needs to go to the bathroom, if you need to put gasoline in your automobile, if, God forbid, you have a medical emergency, where are you going to sleep? Where are you going to eat? Where are you going to get your hair done? The Negro Motorist Green Book listed such places. 
It was published in 1936 by New York postal carrier Victor Hugo Green and put small African-American businesses across the country on the map. Eventually, says Rick Burns, the expansion of America's highways offered a level of protection to African-American drivers, giving them alternatives to state and local roads. However, the film shows African-American drivers continue to be racially profiled and disproportionately likely to be stopped by the police. And so if people want to say, you know, what is this thing, structural racism, systemic racism, which has this kind of like uh, abstract quality at first glance. It's not abstract, it's profoundly concrete. Penelope Pulu, VOA News, Washington. Now, as we near the end of our show, let's highlight an artist. Nearly a decade ago, Kenyan-Norwegian singer Stella Nyamura Mwangi made music history in Europe. And today, she continues to draw on her Kenyan roots as her music goes viral all around the world. In a virtual interview that she did with Heather Maxwell on VOA's Music Time in Africa, she talks about all the different things that she had to go through in her life to get to her breakthrough and her success today. Let's listen. History with Eurovision um, Song Contest and you were the first black woman as an African woman, as a Kenyan woman to uh, be singing in the contest in an East African language, right? And you were the, it was the first time that Norway had, had um, an African woman representing Norway. You know, I came here with my family in 92 as a political refugee, but they hadn't seen so many, you know, foreigners at all. So I was going through the hardest time of my life. But the most beautiful thing is that this contest, they're actually, you know, it's people voting. And in my year, it was like a record of how many people were voting because, you know, uh, Norway really proved the rest, the rest of the world that, you know, music, it's not about color. It's not about any of that. It's about the feeling that you're giving to and the honesty that you're giving to. And that was just history. So let's come to today now, get to today. So I have the anthem song for Just Dance 2020. And, you know, Africa is really being put into light right now in terms of the music and the culture, fashion, everything. So I wrote Maito. Maito means our truth. And Maito also also means our mother. It's actually praising the truth. So people are dancing to a very spiritual song. I love the Afro-futuristic craziness of this. Can you give us a little hint or a flavor of one of the songs that you are going to quickly reveal in 2021? One song that I'm coming out with is called Long Way Coming. It's produced by a Finland producer. He's very young. He's called Aaron Salvatore. Uh, and that song, I'm speaking out on where I have been, you know, the storms that I've been through. And if we want to follow you, how can everybody, you know, keep track yes. of what Stella's up to? Yes, it's Stella Mwangi everywhere. Stella Mwangi on Instagram, on Twitter, Stella Mwangi official on Facebook. Stella, and Stella, Stella, Stella. Stella, 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 Stella everywhere. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stella Mwangi. It has been a real pleasure. Thank you so much, Heather. It's been my pleasure too. You have a nice time and we'll talk. So guys, we have finally arrived in the holiday season. COVID or no COVID, we're all very happy to make it to this time of the year. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Red Carpet. I'm your host, Zia Adam, and I hope you enjoy your holidays and have a great weekend. Uh, 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 uh.